Thank you very much. And it's lovely to see uh, all the people I've been meeting with on this bill over the last few weeks. So thank you, first of all, for being here today and for all the support you've given to C220 through its evolution. I wanted to come back to the question that Senator Dasko was asking, which is that this bill not only gives uh, bereavement leave to immediate family members, but also to non-immediate family members who may have been designated compassionate caregivers. And I wondered, because your own expertise is in that compassionate care area, if you could explain to us why you think that's important, that this bill isn't just for the sort of typical immediate family members. Sure, maybe I can, I can start that one. This is so important. Um, from personal experience, I'm the primary caregiver to an elderly Italian couple that lives next door because their children all live far away. I spend hours every day looking after them. And if they passed away, I don't qualify by definition as immediate family, but it, it has taken a toll on me emotionally. And so many people we know living alone, when you look at heart disease and stroke, um, many women live alone because they've outlived their husbands. So others come in to take care of them and form that bond. And so they should be given the right to be able to grieve and have that space to grieve because it affects them no less. They love somebody no less because they're not blood relatives or immediate relatives as defined in labor law. So we think it's important that you recognize those relationships and the care and compassion people have given to those who aren't immediate family members and that they should also be allowed that time and support to take although, that space they need. Although just to clarify, this wouldn't be, I mean, you would not qualify for this. This is for somebody, this is only in the case of somebody who is already a designated yeah. compassionate caregiver. Yeah. I, I, I don't want people to, to misunderstand, yeah. but it's, yeah, so it's, it's for that very small group yeah. of people who might have been granted a leave of yeah. absence already to care for someone who is close no. to them, but who is not an immediate family member. Absolutely, and the role doesn't stop the minute death occurs. They carry all of that emotion and all of that connection with them and should be allowed that time. Julie, I didn't know if you wanted to, to respond to that question. Yes, uh, thank you, Senator Simons. Yes, I, I would agree. If someone has, um, has a long-term caregiving role, um, such as when they take that compassionate care leave, no matter if they're an immediate family or member or not, they 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 need that that time, um, that bereavement time for sure. Um, for a disease like MS, which is long term, um, caregivers uh, come in all sorts, as I mentioned, right? They can be spouses, but they can also be friends and long term friends, who could then apply for compassionate care leave, and then um, then this would be available to them as well, which is so super important and supportive of the caregivers. And I think, you know, as we talked about, you know, this is much more an inclusive piece. Um, and, I, and I think that's a critical piece in uh, the discussion of bereavement leave. Thank you both very much.